Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the idea of planetary collisions which may have occurred early on in our solar system when many different planets collided with other planets and created certain effects that we observe today. Welcome to What The Math, hopefully you learned something new today. <laughs> So what you just witnessed was the collision between Neptune and Saturn that essentially disrupted Saturn's rings but left Saturn completely unscathed otherwise. But we're not really going to be talking about uh, Saturn because we don't really know if Saturn, Jupiter and um, in this case Neptune actually had any serious collisions because it's, they, they are gas giants so it's a little bit difficult for us to, uh, to witness any kind of uh, collision effects or collision remains. But we are going to be talking about the terrestrial planets and one gas giant that we think definitely received a collision. And specifically here, I'm talking about Uranus. Uh, let's actually start with Uranus. So one of the reasons that we are almost certain that Uranus must have had a collision is because it's actually um, orbiting in a very peculiar way. If you look at its spin, you may notice that it's actually orbiting in such a way, or rotating in such a way that it's actually on its side. So this is the only planet that has that, and it's very likely the effect of some kind of a major collision a long time ago. But because we don't really see the surface, and because we don't really know enough about Uranus, we don't really know what happened here and how it acquired this unusual rotation. So instead, we're going to focus on the four planets that we know for a fact had a, some sort of a collision, and we can see the effects as well. And of course, I'm talking about the four um, inner terrestrial planets, Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury. So what do we know and how do we know it? So first of all, we know Mercury had a collision almost certainly and almost for sure. One of the reasons for this, um, let me just actually demonstrate it to you visually so you understand what happened here. So a long time ago, Mercury was not as small and was not as dense. Currently, Mercury has the second highest density after Earth because it has a lot and a lot of iron. But we think that a long time ago, it must have had a little bit more mass. So it may have been a little bit bigger and definitely had a lot, a lot more silicates and a lot less iron. So it was a lot different. But then something uh, occurred and it very likely received a collision from a very, very large object, possibly the size of the moon or maybe even larger than the moon that basically did the following. It collided in such a way that basically, uh, upon the collision, it uh, ended up releasing a huge amount of the silicate material that is eventually uh, flew into the outer solar system or possibly the inner solar system or possibly even the sun and uh, disappeared from the surface of Mercury. And you can kind of see it happening right here with the moon basically stripping Mercury of its um, silicate shell. And what was left instead was a very large iron shell that we have today with the total mass being about uh, five masses of the moon. And essentially, this is how we know that Mercury must have had a collision because it has very, very unique composition. It's uh, predominantly iron and nickel, which is very unusual for a terrestrial planet. And it definitely has um, a lot of signs of a planet that must have undergone some kind of a dramatic change in its past. So that's Mercury. Let's go to Venus. So we're going to zoom out here and go to the second planet, Venus. Now, Venus was very different back in the days. As a matter of fact, it was very likely uh, very terrestrial. It must have had liquid water. It must have had um, an atmosphere that was actually uh, acceptable for human life. And it must have had very, very uh, different uh, surface as well. But before that, it very likely received a collision as well. So we know this because if you look at the spin of Venus as well, it actually rotates in the opposite direction to uh, where it should be rotating, and it does so very, very slowly. So this suggests one thing. This suggests that a long time ago, something must have hit it and slowed down its rotation. So it's very likely that uh, many, many years ago, Venus had a rotation that was very similar to Mars and Earth, so somewhere around possibly 24 hours uh, per rotation. In other words, one day was close to one day. Then something, uh, possibly the size of uh, Mars, or even a little bit smaller, um, hit it straight face-on. In this particular location, 
um, essentially slowing down the spin dramatically and causing Venus to uh, rotate much, much, much slower. So you can kind of see it's about to happen and boom. So there is that Martian collision. This might have been actually a little bit too big because uh, this will, yeah, this will cause the planet to spin a lot faster in the opposite direction. So it's very likely that the object was smaller than that. Must have been maybe size of the moon as well, or possibly even smaller. And this uh, caused Venus to change rotation and to acquire the rotation that it has today, which is um, a lot uh, slower than the actual year on Venus. So one year on Venus is actually uh, shorter than one day on Venus. All right, so that was Venus. Now, what about Earth? Did Earth receive a collision? Well, of course it did. We know that for a fact because we've discovered that Earth has a very, very similar composition to Moon. And because of that, we've concluded that a long time ago, Earth must have received a collision from a Mars-like object by the name of Theia. And when this object collided with our planet Earth, it threw out a very huge chunk of rocks that eventually became the moon that started orbiting around our planet Earth. And today we actually have quite a lot of support for this theory, uh, including the fact that moon and Earth have an incredibly similar composition, as if moon was created from Earth, which it has been. All right, what about the last one? What about Mars? So in case of Mars, things are a little bit different. So it took a while for us to actually realize that Mars has also received a collision, and this was very likely from an asteroid that was uh, larger than the Moon, it was possibly as, as big as about 4,000 kilometers in diameter, uh, with Moon only being about 3,400 uh, or 3,500 5 kilometers in diameter. And here, uh, this is what happened. So this particular asteroid actually came from the top, or possibly from this direction here, and it actually hit Mars right around there on the flat surface of its northern pole and it actually changed mars completely so if you ever look at pictures of mars or if you ever see the map of mars you'll notice that the northern hemisphere of mars is very different from the southern hemisphere and the actual shape of mars even though it's spherical in the game here is actually different too so the northern part is kind of squished whereas the southern part looks kind of normal. So this suggests that a very large uh, collision occurred a long, long time ago that basically turned Mars uh, slightly uh, elongated or slightly squished. It basically kind of looks like, um, I guess you would call it a bowl, but not really, not really a bowl. But it, essentially this whole northern area right here is slightly more squished than this southern area here. And th this is almost certainly from a collision that occurred in this region right here that we one day hopefully will uh, learn more about if we go to Mars and colonize it and build a few scientific stations. Now, there's clearly uh, a lot of stuff that collided with, uh, with each other and with everything else in the early solar system, and there's clearly quite a lot of various interesting collisions that may have changed our solar system to the way it is today. And we're going to talk a, a little bit more about how these collisions actually occurred and um, what actually led to all of this stuff happening in one of the next videos. So do subscribe and do come back tomorrow because you might actually learn something completely different. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something from this video and I hope now you know about the early solar system collisions that each of these planets received early on in its existence. So let's actually collide a few Mercuries with our beautiful Mars here and see what happens to it afterwards. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your support. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon just because it does help me get better equipment and make better videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And I'm going to collide a few more Mercuries with Mars just to give it a little bit more mass and make its composition and its density much higher. So now, Mars has a lot more iron. It's also very likely going to have liquid iron core, which will give it magnetosphere, and its uh, actual mass has increased as well, with its um, escape velocity, or surface gravity, somewhat more similar to Earth now. Now let's cool it down and see what it all looks like. And welcome to new Mars. 
Slightly better, slightly more improved, but I guess a little bit more rugged than before. Anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.